It is indeed a pleasure to introduce uh, you to um, someone who has who is, has been a friend, a friend to our department for quite some time, and uh, and a, an ac absolutely charming gentleman in every sense of that word. Uh, this is Frank Delatory, and uh, Frank has retired from 35 years as the chief assistant public defender in Fort Lauderdale and has some wonderful, uh, wonderful things to share about that. If, you, if we're not in a recorded PD session, he loves to share about those experiences. He has also been uh, an adjunct for uh, for the criminal justice department at, uh, at FAU since 1994. And he is also an adjunct uh, for uh, Nova Southeastern. And so um, based on that, he does have a lot of good experience at, in teaching, teaching online, and uh, and he is, uh, is highly qualified to do that. And now we are all have, are experiencing a whole new process, and he's been experienced at doing that too. So with that, I am going to turn it over to you. Let me share Frank Delatory with you, my friends. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me today, and uh, what a pleasure! Um, if you guys have not been on campus, it's it's really you can get a good parking space even if you don't come at eight a.m. in the morning like I do for my classes. So it's great to be here. And I want to share with you uh, how to teach in uh, this new model of teaching uh, where students get to have a lot of choices because uh, HyFlex uh, allows you to teach face to face, uh, which we are accustomed to, or also in the same time, same class, have students uh, view you uh, through Zoom. Uh, and additionally, the students can also, if they choose, later on come back and watch it on the zoom cloud so they have choices and i think that's why uh they they love it uh because it gives them these different opportunities of how to watch uh the video uh or attend face to face and and with that uh, new model um i just want to emphasize to you um that it's fun uh it, it's it it allows you to teach face to face synchronous or asynchronous uh, style. So let me share with you how I became involved in this. Um, after uh, being totally online uh, through most of 2020, um, I'm an adjunct, so uh, I, I teach also at NSU. Uh, as Judy taught you, told you, I was, I've been teaching here since 1994. When I started teaching, I actually had black hair and a lot more of it. But um, NSU started teaching in this model last semester. And so that's how I became involved in it. Um, and um, I had a class which met twice a week. Uh, and, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot how to teach in this model. I really enjoyed doing it. It got me out of the house, back on campus, uh, and meeting students face to face at the same time, learning a totally new way how to teach. Uh, and I took courses at NSU, uh, how to teach in this format, and also courses here at FAU, how to teach in this format. Um, and I've grown to like it. I've grown to love it. Uh, it's not without challenges, um, but you can definitely uh, do it. Um, as you can see, you can teach face-to-face, -face, synchronous, and asynchronous style. What I want to share to you is how do you teach in this format? Uh, again, I want to emphasize that it's easy and it's actually fun. Um, and I want to assure you, if I can do it, anyone can. Uh, as Dr. Summers would tell you, uh, I just recently learned how to turn on a computer. Uh, so you certainly can do it. Um, I think the first thing that I want to emphasize if you're teaching in this format is get to your class early and end early. And let me, let me, tell you why. Uh, in my experience doing this last semester, uh, fall semester at NOVA, uh, I anticipate that there's going to be a problem with the machinery. I went into a process where six classes in a row, uh, the Zoomers could not, uh, uh, I could hear that 
they could hear me, but I couldn't hear them. Uh, so I had those issues to deal with. So um, I want to share with you my first class here. Um, my first class here was January 11th under this format. And I really wasn't anxious about it uh, because I've been doing it for an entire semester. And so uh, I still want to get there early for the reasons I'm going to talk about. But I live in Weston and uh, it takes me 45 minutes here. My class is 8 a.m. Uh, so you can imagine how early I had to get to get here early. But I did. And as I shared with Dr. Summers, I got the first spot uh, in the parking lot. That's how early I got here. And I was not nervous because I knew the building that I was going to be teaching in uh, is GS. I was teaching and taught many classes in GS. My classroom was 115. Uh, the first classroom as you walk in through the east part of it. Uh, this is a true story. I'm not making this up. You can't make this stuff up. Um, I got there early, as I said. I walked to my class and it was dark. The classroom was dark. Not unusual. GS has no uh, windows in the bottom classes. As I go into the classroom, uh, I know where the lights are. I flip them up, no lights. Okay, no problem. There's other lights fixtures. I've taught in this building before. I know where that. I go turn them on, no lights. So uh, what do I do? I turn on my camera uh, light and I find the phone number, which I have posted here on the bottom for you if you have problems to call. And I called the IT. Nate answered in the first, first ring. That was good. And I told him my problem. He goes, well, that's not my department, but I'm going to help you anyway. He promptly came to my classroom and he turned the lights on. Switch on, no nothing. Turn the light, switch on, nothing. Um, now my wife will tell you, I'm not the brightest light in the chandelier, but I know how to turn on a light switch. So I had no lights. Nate said he would call the electrician. So I had a choice to make at this point. Should I cancel class or go forward? I opened both doors and uh, decided to go through the class. I had enough lights uh, to run everything. The equipment worked seamlessly, and I'll go through that in a second, but it was perfect. I was a little dark. I made a joke about it. I told the students, I go, listen, it's dark in here. I was talking to the Zoomers at this point, and the reason is we don't have lights. This is the only classroom in the entire building that does not have lights. I go, but that's, that's an advantage for you because as my wife would tell you, I look better in the dark. So we all had a laugh and we had a wonderful class. But that's just one reason you want to get to class early. The first thing I do when I get to the classroom, as I did in Nova and I did in my two classes so far at FAU, is, is I take wipes and I disinfect any of the area where I'm going to use and I'm going to teach from. I bring my own wipes just in case. Uh, but FAU and NOVA had plenty of sanitizers and hand wipes for you to clean. Uh, again, I go early because I anticipate something will not be working. Um, I provide you this number and it's put it on your phone. Uh, but if you don't, they have the phone listed right there uh, in next to your computer. Um, I called and like I said, Nate answered in first ring and came to my classroom. Um, so that's a good number to have for you. Um, so get your classroom uh, on time and er end early because the last thing you want to do is have a, a, a log jam in front of your podium when the new classroom is starting to come in. It's not very healthy at this stage of the pandemic. So how do you get started? Um, and I think the, it's important for you uh, to, before you do anything else, you log into Canvas. Uh, I open up whatever material I'm going to use, and then I minimize it. I've been teaching for years using instructor notes or PowerPoints or videos. I open the ones that I'm going to use for that classroom, and I minimize it. Then, after I minimize it, I go into Zoom. Um, FAU has three classrooms that you may be assigned to. Two of the classrooms uh, automatically start up the video for you. I'm in classroom three where I have to start it up myself. Uh, my sessions, uh, I go into Zoom, I have them uh, set ahead of time, and I recommend, as I do, to start, uh, I click to, for the classroom to start automatically. Because I'm old, I, I'm forgetting things, I forget to take my Prevagen in the morning, that's how forgetful I am. So I have it set automatically. Um, I don't use a waiting room. 
because uh, as Judy will tell you, uh, and Jade would tell you, I can't walk and chew gum at the same time. So I'm not going to be able to see the students' questions until I finish um, uh, the chat room. Or and, and that's why I don't use a waiting room because I don't want to have to click people in. I mute. I do mute the students upon uh, them entering. Um, the most important thing for me is when I get in there early and I'm, I've logged in now, I've I've started my Zoom. Is I test the equipment, and I. I don't know, maybe I'm just uh, PTSD from uh, teaching last semester. I, I expect something not to be working. Um, and so the first thing I do is I, I test my sound. Uh, when you go to your class on the lower left, you'll see a little Chevron uh, upside down uh, pointer. Uh, click on that, click on that. And, um, and when you come up a box of beep and you'll be able to test your sound. If you test your sound, and you hear ringtone, you're in business. Everything is fine. And if not, you call that number and it'll come to help you. Um, the first thing I do is I sit back and I wait uh, for a student to arrive on Zoom. When they do, I immediately engage them in some sort of conversation so I know that they can hear me. And just as importantly, I can hear them. Uh, when you turn on your equipment, you should see yourself on the computer screen. Depending on the class that you're in, you'll be also be able to see you and the, and the picture behind you or in front of you, depending on the classroom that you're in. Um, so very important to get there early and test out your equipment on, on, on how to run this. Um, if everything's running, you can go on and proceed. Um, start your class, what to expect. Um, I think, uh, and I took this personally at, at NOVA at first, um, I had, I, and I took meticulous attendance uh, because this was the first time they were doing it and they wanted this type of uh, information. Um, I had a class at 30, which at NOVA was a full class. Uh, only 10 students could be in my class at one point and we rotated at every, every class. So. Uh, every student had an opportunity to meet face to face if they wanted to. Um, so I was excited to finally, after uh, almost a half a year, having face to face students again. Um, it didn't really happen. As I found out, most students choose not to come to class face to face. I averaged 1.5 students uh, that came to my classes. Uh, and again, I took that personally. I go, well, I thought I was a good lecturer. Maybe I'm not. Uh, but students choose not to come to class. I mean, think about it. If you have a class that starts at A&M, do you want to fight the traffic on 595, the turnpike, or whatever roadway you use to get to school? Probably not. So most students chose not to. So one of my biggest fears as the semester went on is what happens if I show up and there are no students, um, they're going to see somebody's going to walk by my classroom and see some old man talking to himself, and I'm going to get Baker acted. Um, sure enough, uh, that happened. Not Baker acted, but I had a class with no students. Uh, if you recall, last fall we had a little hurricane, and the one student that came to every class, her parents wouldn't let her come. And so I was by myself. I just, but not by myself because I had the Zoomers. The rest of the class was watching at home through Zoom. Um, so um, don't be don't be feel bad if you have low attendance face to face. You'll have a lot of attendance uh, through Zoom. Uh, my attendance was overwhelmingly good through Zoom. So most students will choose to stay home and attend asynchronously through Zoom. I think the challenge for us as instructors uh, is how do we engage two sets of students? Because uh, we're gonna have students in the classroom face to face. Um, my last class here at FAU, I had my record, I had 10 students show up for my Monday class. And again, it went back to the regular slow amount for my Friday class where I had five face to face students. So how do we engage the students uh, that are in the classroom and in Zoom at the same time. That's the challenge to us. How do I do it? 
I do it by asking questions. Uh, I start first with the face to face students. If I'm teaching a course like death penalty, I might want to say, um, what are the two foundation cases uh, that give us our death penalty litigation uh, as it stands today? And I'll start with face to face students. Uh, after the answer, I will then turn to uh, the Zoomers. And you know who the Zoomers are. You know who they are because you have your attendees there and you know who, what students you have there. Call on them, call on them and ask them the question. Um, don't be, uh, feel bad if you have that awkward silence where nobody uh, picks up. Uh, wait and call on them again. They'll, they'll come through uh, and they'll turn on their video or just their sound a more likely just their sound so you can you can hear uh, what they're saying. Um, and that's how I engage them. I make sometimes a game out of it. Um, one thing that I wanna caution you on uh, when you're teaching in this format, when you, when you ask your face-to-face -face students a question and they answer it, you're gonna hear them great. The Zoomers are not gonna be able to hear what your face-to-face -face student just heard in many times. So you'll have to repeat their answers so the Zoomers can be engaged in the lecture and can hear. So uh, you know who's there, you know who your participant, uh, participants are. Um, so that's important for you uh, to remember, um, to make sure and when there's face-to-face uh, -face students ask uh, answers to questions, you repeat it so everybody can hear it. Um, I want to emphasize, and uh, there's been emails to this effect, is try to, uh, to remember to, to end your class early. Rem uh, end your class early uh, because you don't want to have that uh, logger jam where your students are asking you questions. Um, the way I've handled it, uh, my last, my two classes here, uh, is to say, hey, listen, I'll, I'll meet you at Starbucks. Um, I'm in the G, uh, GS building right next to it, and we can answer your questions or email me your questions, and I'll be glad to go through it. Um, I've also listed for you uh, here on the, my last page is some certain uh, inf information. Um, there's that help uh, phone number uh, if you have any problems with the equipment. Um, the way FAU does it, um, the students have to reserve a seat prior to your class because you only can have a certain amount of, of, of students in your class uh, so you, we can remain safe. Um, you'll find that the, uh, the seats are, are socially distanced um, and everyone wears a mask during uh, the class, including the instructor. Um, so. I provide there a, a something you can share with your students so they can learn how to reserve a seat. Uh, there's an instructor guide for seating, the reservation tool also. Uh, so these links are important for you to share uh, with your students. Most students will choose to stay home and attend asynchronously or synchronously or both? Um, both, both. Um, and um, thank you for bringing that up because I do want to share this with you. Um, so I have an 8 a.m. class. Um, and and <laughs> so I want to just caution you how some students will appear. Um, I had last semester a freshman class, um, first class students, first time in college. Um, I had one wonderful student. Uh, in fact, I see him, he's on my a list for students uh, in a class that I'm teaching there later on. It's a short semester. And I'm just going to make up a name, Tyler. Uh, and Tyler would always come up perfect attendance, but on Zoom. He would appear um, like he just woke out of a bed, probably because he did. Uh, bed hair, uh, no shirt on. I go, Tyler, please put on a shirt. I don't care about your hair, but put on a shirt. So expect stuff like that to happen um, with your Zoomers. I, 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 you're going to get most of your attendees are going to be watching your lecture through Zoom. I also obviously allow them to go back on the cloud because it's being recorded just as this is being recorded uh, to uh, go back if they miss it and watch it again. 
Um, and I encourage them to do that in case they miss the class. And of course, you have a great opportunity to keep great attendance because as we all know, uh, Zoom records the people that are in uh, watching the lecture uh, and for how long they've been there. Uh, so uh, you get a chance to really yeah, have a good picture of what the attendance is. We have a question also from uh, Elaria Sarah, Dr. Sarah. She expressed a concern that I think many faculty have is if we're not requiring them to have their video on, um, how do you how do how do you handle that with that with not actually being able to see see them? We yeah, them. You ask them yeah. to turn on the mic, and that's yeah. that's great. an adjustment, I'm sure. Great question, outstanding question. So, um, yeah, I would say 95 percent of the time, students choose not to turn on yeah. their their video, and I'm perfectly okay with that. Um, they probably would prefer me to take my video off. Uh, but be that as be that as it may, um, their audio is on there. So most of the time, I'm I'm conversing with somebody's name that's listed there, and they're talking to me, and that's okay. That's okay. Um, my face to face students can hear what what is being said, and um, and of course I can. Um, only thing that, that you'll have problems with is when your face to face students talk. Uh, the Zoomers are not going to be able to hear them. So you just repeat it and the class flows fairly good, fa fairly well that way. But thank you for asking that. That's a good question. Uh, most of the time, okay. you're going to be talking to a mic. I leave it on to them uh, whether they want to turn on their video or not. I don't need it uh, yeah. to be able to engage them so long as they can hear me and I can hear them. I can have communication with them and I can teach um, my class to them. Um, and um, some choose to do it. It seems the same students choose to do it and yeah, some yeah. students choose not to. Uh, and I don't have a problem with that um, I, at all. Um, but I, I would say to you uh, that my experience from doing this one full semester and then two classes is most students choose not to put on their video. Um, and again, that's okay with me. Um, so yeah, long as they yeah. will, engage with me. I will add in there that if I, I do let them know that it is their choice, but also ask them that if they are making any kind of a presentation for class that I expect them to have their videos on and be appropriately professionally attired. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a great point. And, and I, I just want to share with you, too, is I engage my students um, by asking questions. Um, because I teach law classes, and quite frankly, that's the way uh, law is taught. It's in the Socratic method. The professor comes in and asks questions many times, uh, never lectures, but just asks questions. Um, so I'm used to that format of engaging my students, but there's other ways for you to engage students in this mo modality. Um, my good friend who I met uh, through um, faculty lounge, which is this Wednesday, getting the call a plug. It's a great way to learn from other professors. Um, uh, this professor, Brittany Aldman, uh, Dr. Aldman is a calculus teacher, much smarter than me. Uh, and she breaks her classrooms into groups uh, and then goes into her groups. Um, so that's, an, that's another format uh, for you try to engage students. I actually took a whole class on how to do that. Uh, and I tried it. It was a terrible disaster. I've never gone back to it. Uh, so I go back to what works for me, which is asking asking questions. But there's other ways for you to engage your students under this format. One thing that I forgot, um, but I wrote myself a note to bring it up, and it is this. Um, I feel perfectly safe. I'm not Dr. Fauci, uh, but I feel perfectly safe teaching in this format. Um, it's socially distanced. Everyone's wearing a mask. There's wipes. I wipe down my equipment or anything that I'm going to touch beforehand. And I, I try to be neighborly. And before I leave, I wipe it down again. Uh, but I feel safer, quite honestly, uh, teaching in this format than I do uh, having to go to Publix where shopping is expensive, uh, which I have to go because I have a honey-do list that I have to do on my way home. And one of them is going to Publix. And honestly, I feel safer 
uh, teaching under this modality than I do uh, going uh, to Publix. As I stated before, you're going to find an overwhelming majority of your students choose to watch the lecture through Zoom and not come face to face. Uh, so if you have any reservations of, about that, I understand them. I, they're well taken. But from my experience, I found myself to be perfectly safe. I want to share with you one more problem that I had. Um, like I said, other than the lights not working uh, for my first classroom in GS 115, uh, it, it, it was seamless. The, the equipment worked perfectly. My next class uh, with, was a larger class, SO 270. And in that particular classroom, it's a huge classroom. Uh, again, uh, plenty of uh, hand sanitizer wipes, uh, and uh, when I started the class, I tested my equipment. It seemed to be working well. When the first Zoomer came on, I asked him, can you hear me? He said, yes. Uh, I go, can you say something to see if I can hear you? Uh, by the way, he, he chose to keep his video off, a uh, student that I've had for many, many classes. And I could hear him, but way too loud. Um, I, you can fix that. You'll find in, in type three classrooms, it's the old black box, just lower your volume. Even with that, the volume in these large classrooms, even when you lowered the volume, was overwhelming. And you had a hard time understanding it. And it wasn't just uh, me who had the same problem. I uh, talked to um, uh, Professor Langlois. He had the same issue. Uh, the the sound was so loud that you had a hard time understanding it. Again, the face-to-face -face students in the classroom helped me understand what the Zoomers were saying. Uh, it got to the point that I would ask the Zoomers to move away from their computer, uh, and that seemed to help also. Uh, but just giving you that these things, you'll, you'll run into problems, uh, and you just need to work around it. I think the best practice uh, the best practice of teaching under the pandemic is flexibility. You have to be flexible uh, and you have to be able to change and move to be able to teach uh, under this format or any format in, uh, in this pandemic that we're in. Some students prefer face-to-face -face and do better face-to-face. -face. Yes. My, my daughter loves online classes, but when it comes to a biology lab, she's going face to face and she can she could care less how many of her fellow classmates told her not to go she's going face to face and that's their right uh but it's the same token uh we can't force these students in my opinion uh, legally putting on my lawyer hat uh to come to face to face classes during a pandemic um so this format is the best of both worlds isn't it it allows those that learn better face-to-face -to, -face to come face-to-face -to -face. and those that don't feel safe yet to uh, continue uh, and to uh, attend through Zoom. Uh, and, but at the same time, they get that live, live lecture, right? Uh, which they wouldn't on a fully online class. Um, although many of us have gone on fully online class to offer uh, Zoom lectures, I know I do and many of my colleagues do the same thing. Um, so that's a very interesting uh, issue that you brought up and thank you for bringing it up. If I can, I have another question regarding attendance. <laughs> it's always in Yeah. Yeah. Um, because the, the classes are recorded, they don't really have to be present. And did that lessen your uh, participation and are you keeping grades for participation since you're not, they're not showing up, then they, they're, Great lowers. That's another of our problems. Yeah, yeah. Great question. Yeah. So, um, absolutely, I do do fifteen percent of their greatest participation, um, and uh, at the same token, um, I want them to see the lecture, uh, whether they uh, you do it or not. Now, in my two classes at FAU, I did not have participation as a grade, but I want them to uh, to to view view the lecture. And so I've actually gone to uh, one of my colleagues, um, the great Ricky Langlois, has taught me just offer them two 
points extra credit and they'll watch it. And sure enough, uh, the ones that didn't offer it, I, I, I put out an announcement, uh, watch the lecture that you missed on January 11th and let me know that you watched it by answering X, Y, and Z. And, uh, and then uh, I will give you two points extra credit. And if you attended the class, I'll give you two points extra credit. And if you attended through Zoom, I'll give you two points extra credit. Um, through that, um, uh, without the ones that did not show up for either Zoom or face-to-face, -face, the attendance was outstanding. Uh, and it's almost up to 100% in all, uh, both of my classes. So just simply by doing that, they, they, they've, they've shown up. They've shown up either face-to-face -face or watching it live through Zoom or have come back later on to watch the lecture on the Zoom cloud. And really, that's all I want. I want them to get the material that I taught face-to-face. -face. Uh, for whatever reason, they couldn't attend. Okay, here it is for you. Watch it, learn from it. I also put it on there. I go, listen, you have questions. Uh, here's my phone number. You can call me. Uh, here's my email. Email me your, uh, your questions. I go, most people, including my own family, prefer just to communicate with me by email. And so do my students. I don't know what it is about my personality, but it is. Uh, and they've emailed me questions. So I'm confident that they've actually watched the lecture uh, that they missed. And after all, that's all I really want. I want to make sure they get the material that I'm trying to teach them. Know that uh, we will be sending uh, Frank's presentation out to you, and particularly if you want to go to your last page again, please, with the information. That's some really important um, things that that you will definitely want to to keep handy as you are, are moving through this process. And it is it is most definitely a learning process for all of us as far as handling, manipulating, figuring out what goes where. Um, my other question, Frank, was, and which I think you've already answered, is if you do any way of trying to have the two, you know, the online and the in-class uh, interact at all together with each other. And, and uh, I think that, uh, I think your answer was that that's not really your teaching style, right? Yeah, um, but I, I certainly tried it. Um, and I think it's it's great uh, for it's for uh, Brittany has a calculus class, uh, so she can break the class into smaller groups. And then yeah. if you get into this modality, you can, as the instructor, go into a group and then pop out and go into another group. It, it's a great study to do it. Um, I tried it at, at Nova. It just did not work for me, but I was really wanted to learn. Uh, how to do it because, um, quite frankly, it gives me a break from straight out lecturing because my voice <laughs> a break, um, but it just did not work for me. But I know it works for her and it certainly can work for you. Um, and um, I'm not just, I'm not as good with the computer as she is, uh, and, <laughs> but I, I tried, I tried. So, uh, so thank you. This is Wonderful information that we all uh, appreciate and need. Thanks so much to everyone for joining us today. Mm -hmm.